Hey guys, this is a mod I've been working on for my Fanatec Formula V2 rim and I wanted to talk to you guys about why and also how. So if you saw my recent video of the review of the Simagic GT Neo, you'll see that that was really eye-opening for me because the GT Neo is a very, very stiff wheel and when I used it back to back with the Formula V2 on my DD1, it really did highlight where the um, Formula V2 was a bit lacking. But also in that process, I discovered that the grips on my Formula V2 had broken. So I decided to have a go at repairing the grips and in the process, optimize the design of the rim to my standard, um, you know, with the priority being to stiffen the wheel. Those of you who've seen some of my other videos will know that I much prefer the closed bottom wheel designs rather than the open bottom that the Formula V2 came as standard. And so with a little bit of inspiration from people like Peter from Pineapple Grips, I set about trying to repair this. So I actually used the disassembly guide from the Pineapple Grips website. So big thank you to Pineapple Grips there. So I started disassembling and I quickly discovered a fairly significant broken part on the right grip, which makes sense because that's the one that was feeling a little bit loose. Then I realized it was quite a bit more work to remove the rear grips. And since I found the main source of the brake slash flex, I decided to leave the rear grips in place even though they show little signs of cracks. So the grips are 270 millimeters in width and so printing it in one piece was not going to happen on any of the 3D printers that I have. But thankfully, uh, 3D Printing Perth loaned me the FL Sun V400, which I reviewed very recently and I still have it and I'm very seriously considering buying it from 3D Printing Perth because I, I just don't want to disassemble it. And it has opened up possibilities in terms of its speed and size, particularly for this project. So the first thing I did, I had the front off of the rim, I took a photo of it with a ruler. And I did that from as far away as practically possible just to help remove the factor of perspective distortion. And so I loaded that into my CAD software and I just quickly plotted the holes over the existing screw holes. And this was the first test print. So it's just a very quick dummy handle and it has the cutouts for the vibration motor and the joystick and also all of the holes for the uh, mounting holes and so on are uh, generously sized. And that allowed me to overlay it over the wheel and see exactly how far off each of them was and what adjustments I need to do in the software to get it right. Also, I didn't want to do the left and the right separately. So what I did was I set the software to mirror everything I was doing on the right on the left hand side. And so my next print was actually two-sided and this was doing the exact same thing. I was just laying this over the wheel, checking the placement of all the holes, seeing what adjustments were needed. And I ended up printing out quite a few of these, so six in total, but eventually I was able to get the whole placement dialed in very, very closely. Then the next step was to print this dummy handle. So this looks very similar to the first test print I made, but it's quite different because it actually has all the projections and the actual holes for the screws to actually mount into. And so with this one, I knew that I only needed to print out the one half because I'd already dialed in all the hole locations and factored in the symmetry. And with this, I was able to verify that the factory screws would screw in nicely. And it turns out that everything was perfect. So the next step was to model the entire grip, which was actually really challenging because I had left the rear grips in place which meant that my top grip design was really tied to the shape of the rear grips. And the way that I tried to copy the rear grips was not really compatible with making a comfortable front grip. Anyway, more on that later. And this is my first working prototype. And so this was printed face down. I wanted to prioritize a flat surface on the back so that it would fit really nicely against the carbon fiber. But it turns out that the support surface just looks really terrible and that was a non-starter. But um, I posted this onto Reddit and got quite a good reception and that really motivated me to take the project to the next step. So when this was fitted, I was able to gauge that the overall comfort was reasonable. The radius on the outer edge of the handles was definitely a bit uncomfortable and so I knew that I needed to smooth that out a little bit. But a little bit of patient modeling in Fusion was all it took because it matters what step you do each of your operations in. If you round this corner before the other, sometimes it just doesn't work. And all that led to this design. So so this is where I'm at at the moment and it's definitely not perfect but it's very usable and I've been using this to drive on my DD1 and it actually reminds me a lot of the GT Neo because now I feel the stiffness in the wheel and I actually notice the clunking in the QR1 which before with the standard Formula V2 
I didn't actually notice the clunking in the QR1 because overall there was quite a bit of movement and flex in the wheel and that kind of camouflaged the QR1's issues. But now that the Formula V2 is stiffer, I can definitely feel those issues with the QR1, which I'm not here to talk about the QR1. It just goes to show that the Formula V2 really is stiffened by this mod. So there's definitely a few things that I can improve. One of them is these little extensions. These were designed to actually just touch the thumb encoders and just give them something to brush against to stop them from being so loose and easy to bump by mistake. These ones don't actually work. They are just a little bit too far into the thumb encoder and I can't actually move the encoder freely. It stops and I can't push it any further. So a little bit of refinement is needed there. I would also probably activate a variable layer height for the top surfaces just to ease the transition from the sides to the top. And also at the moment I am using Archimedean Chord top infill pattern and I thought that that would be a nice pattern to look at but it turns out that there's a lot of stop starting with this infill pattern and you end up with a lot of these little pits in the top surface that don't look that nice. Uh, while I'm there I'll probably change the top surface setting to one outer wall only because this was printed with five walls and it just creates quite a stark contrast on the outline of that text. So where to from now? I think that the front only grip design is kind of at the end of its evolution. By trying to copy the rear grip, I just encountered a lot of limitations. And if I were to do the front and the rear together, I have complete freedom in how I do the design. So I think that's probably the next step. I'm going to take those extra steps, take off the rear grips and model those. I am going to aim to make the rear grips quite a bit chunkier because the shape of the grips on the Simagic GT Neo I really really like and I would like to see them on the Formula V2 to see how they feel. And then once I've got a working front and rear grip design that takes me to a bit of a crossroads. Um, a lot of work went into it so I'm taking my time to think about what my next step will be. I thought it'd be fun to try to turn this into a side hustle and sell some ready-made front and rear grip kits uh, to you guys online. Now this is a solid 3D printed grip with no coverings like leather or Alcantara. So I do see this as being a economical option compared to something like a pineapple grip, which is you know, what I would describe as quite a premium option. I think that if I were to make a front and rear grip set, it would probably sell for about half of what pineapple grips are selling theirs for. So let me know in the comments if you think that that's something that's reasonable and something you guys would buy. Anyways, that's it from me. I thought this was a fun project that you guys might want to know about and I had a lot of fun doing it and I'll probably continue to have a bit of fun behind the scenes working on this. So be sure to leave a comment because your input will probably shape the way that I move this project in the future and I'm really excited to see where this goes. Anyways, that's it from me. See you guys in the next video.